So we've had two people in our congregation just come back from service or mission trips recently uh, over the past few weeks. So speaking with them individually uh, and just learning about their experiences, I thought it would be a great idea if we could, uh, if they could share their stories and their experiences with us and what they were up to. So Michael and Courtney, why don't you come on down to the front here and join me on the stage. to learn a little bit about what you guys have been up to. I know Michael was away for a whole month and uh, Courtney was away for 10 days recently. So come on down, take a seat on the stools. We're going to be comfy. Uh, hopefully um, this will be okay. So we're just going to do this interview style. So I'm just going to ask you guys some questions and, uh, and uh, share your experience uh, with the congregation. So Michael, this is not your first time to Ecuador. What made you do this trip again? Well, actually, it's been my third time uh, with Inklink uh, down in Ecuador. Um, I, I so enjoyed the, uh, most of all, the little children there. Um, when they'd see me for the next time that I was down there, they'd leap up in my arms, and it was just, uh, you know, I didn't speak their language, and, and uh, they didn't speak mine, but the, the love and connection uh, spoke louder than words. Awesome. And Courtney, this is your first trip on anything like this. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to do this? Yeah, so my high school offered a lot of service trips and missions trips, but I never really took the opportunity in high school. Um, but I've always wanted to do one, so I found um, Habitat for Humanity. Um, there's a group at my school. Um, so yeah, I signed up for the trip without questioning it, without any doubts. I just wanted to do it right away. Awesome. So this is for both of you. What were your fears before you left, and what were your expectations? Michael? Well, I had no fears, of course, because I've, I've been uh, there a few times, sorry. Uh, but um, uh, I was wondering what, what it was I was being able to uh, contribute. And, uh, and uh, coming home again and, and uh, speaking to friends and, uh, and relatives on my experience. My only fear was um, I went alone without knowing anyone else on the trip. Um, I met all the students um, a few days before I, we left, um, so my only fear was just not um, going with someone I knew and being alone. Um, but and um, my expectations, um, I don't think I had any expectations. I didn't really know what to expect at all. So um, just getting there, I just took it in as it came, and uh, was surprised. I guess. Good. Michael, um, Ecuador is a country of great need. Uh, you spent your time in the Jungle Mission School and the Bonsai After School Program. So tell us a little bit about the needs of these areas and uh, what did you do while you were there? Well, my uh, first part of my trip was in, in the uh, Minawachi uh, Amazon jungle. Um, it's a mission school that um, uh, teaches uh, young students. It was a two-year program where they become uh, pastors, and then they'll go off into their remote communities and uh, uh, start a church and, and, and pastor to uh, you know, people that uh, don't know God and Jesus the way we do. Uh, the second part of my uh, trip, I went down to the coast in Manta, uh, Ecuador, and uh, was involved with a, a program, after-school program for uh, uh, children at risk. Um, we picked them up from uh, their school, and we took them to the church, and uh, same thing, we, we were teaching them the word and uh, playing games with them. I was, uh, I'm a bit of a maintenance man, so in both areas, in, in the jungle and in, uh, and in, uh, in Manta, I was uh, building cabinets for the church and in the, um, and in, in, in the Inuachi, I was, uh, I was uh, doing some landscaping and, and uh, fixing up the place, actually getting the getting the school ready, because I was there a week before the students arrived, so we're getting the, the rooms ready for the students. Great. And Courtney, um, Habitat for Humanity, which is the organization you went, went with, um, how do they help the people in El Salvador? And tell us a little bit about what you did there. Yeah, Habitat for Humanity is an organization um, that provides safe houses for people who can't afford them and don't have them. Um, so they have, um, they have places, they have um, like the headquarters all over the world. Um, so one of them being in El Salvador. Uh, so they partner with the local workers that 
um, that build houses for a living. So um, they get a team from Canada. Um, and then, yeah, the team helps them. It takes six weeks to build a house in El Salvador and only four weeks with the help of a Habitat team. So when we got there, the foundation of the house was already uh, set and we had to um, dig around the entire foundation to put um, a pathway for the family um, for around the house. And we also dug uh, where the water tank was going to go. Um, we also helped with filling the cement between the bricks that the workers laid for us. So that's what we did. Sounds awesome. So Michael, what would you say was your biggest challenge on this trip? Well, the first time I went down there, they told me that you're going to have to get out of your comfort zone. And certainly when I uh, ended up at the, in the jungle, you were hand washing your clothes, using a, a wringer washer to, to wring out your clothes. Uh, being so humid, it would take a couple of days before they would even dry. <laughs> and uh, the cold showers, never any hot water, it was always cold water showers, which I had to get used to. And um, <laughs> they told us, uh, pretend that you like their food. You know, it was a lot of rice, plain rice and boiled chicken, rice morning, lunch, and supper. So that was uh, that was the experience I had. And I, I enjoyed it, I should say. I, I loved it, the, the jungle atmosphere. Good. And Courtney, how about you? What was your biggest challenge? Um, so Habitat for Humanity provided a lot of uh, things for us. So we lived pretty comfortably in a, in a motel just in the main city, um, about 30 minutes from where we were actually on the build site. Um, but so my biggest challenge um, was the language barrier. Um, I really wanted to communicate with the locals and with all the kids that we met as well, um, but it was really hard. So we had to like, or we had to uh, use hand signals and motions things, and that's how we communicated. So I think that was the biggest challenge. Awesome. And how about what was your most favorite part of the trip, Michael? Well, I think I kind of said it already. I skipped forward, but uh, definitely. Um, the, the Jungle Mission uh, School was, uh, I mean, I, I've gone there for the three years that I've gone down there and it's definitely uh, working with the students and, uh, and particularly with the, with the children. We, we take them down to the, the sports field and we, uh, we play games with them, football, soccer, and basketball. But that uh, definitely, uh, I'll go again next year and uh, that will be my first stop will be to be in the Amazon Jungle. Very good. And both of you, how has spending time in Ecuador or El Salvador changed your lives? Um, it definitely made a huge impact on my life. Um, I, do, I do plan to go back next year and every year after that because um, I fell in love with the place and the people there. Um, it definitely um, allowed me to change and, and grow as a person. Um, just to be more, uh, just to put myself out there more um, and to be more outgoing and to kind of take into consideration um, other people because um, life is about other people and being in community. So that's what I learned while I was there. Yeah. Well, um, you know, after coming back uh, each time, you, you certainly uh, appreciate what you have. And, you know, we tend to complain about so minuscule things when you think of uh, what they have and they don't have. Um, I would recommend the students, you know, between maybe uh, high school and university or even semesters that, uh, and even retirees, uh, uh, take the leap and tell you it's, it's, it's so uh, fulfilling to go down there. And, I, and I'll tell you that uh, you'll remember, you remember your, your trip down there, your mission trip there, long after your all-inclusive uh, trip to the Caribbean. <laughs> So true. So thank you, Michael and Courtney, for sharing just briefly with us the, this morning. Um, please say thank you. And, uh, it is true. When you do a missions trip, and, and it, a lot of people that I've spoken to that have been on service trips or mission trips, it, it does change. Even though you're blessing the people there and they love to see you, you're actually getting blessed yourself. You're actually changing yourself. You come back a renewed person. Uh, a changed person. And that goes for uh, serving anywhere, volunteering anywhere. I know a lot of you volunteer in places and, you know, it feels good to go out and serve others and volunteer and help others. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you very much, you guys, for doing this and for sharing your hearts and your trips with us this morning. We're going to uh, take up